Thank you for coming again for Python. I think today is the fifth lecture. And we'll talk today about OOP, Object Oriented Programming. Right? So I'm sure you have done some OOP before. Right? You did Java, you did uh, C++, you must have done some Object Oriented Programming. Anybody did not hear at all about OOP? Object Oriented Programming? Okay, so, all right. Uh, so basically what we said that everything in, in Python is an object. Everything is object, all right? That means it was created through a class, class. Um, and, um, and that's how you should program. So you have to create the classes for your own programs and you could create in your project multiple classes and call them from one class. And um, 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 you know uh, it would be a great structure for your uh, your uh, for your program. So uh, basically, if you need to create a class, you start with the word class, I think, a class, and give it a name. So for example, point. Okay, and you need to create an empty parentheses. Usually, if you don't have anything inside the parentheses, then it's coming from which inherited from which class? Object, object. So every class is inherited from object the class, called object, the freedom factor of And then you could have like, you could have like uh, uh, attributes, okay, and functions. You could have attributes and functions, all right? So that's what we'll be talking about in, in this class, and hopefully we'll finish early today, but we'll give you a little bit more up to deal with, all right, to learn well, any questions so far? All right. <coughs> All right. So, how to define and use your own classes? All right. So, I'm not sure if you are able to read this. Okay. So, this is like uh, 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 object-oriented programming terms or terminology that all of you should be familiar with, and I'm sure uh, you come across it. Uh, uh, before. So what is a class? Any, any person can? What's a class? Class is a blueprint uh, that contains methods and properties or attributes. So a good word is a blueprint. So it's used to, def uh, to define a prototype or a blueprint okay, for the objects that defines a set of attributes and you know, characterize any object of the class. Then after that, we that's the class, right? Then we have the class variable. Anybody tells me what the class variable? You can read. Go ahead. What's a class variable? Yeah. Uh, a variable that is shared by all instances of a class. Exactly, it's a variable. So we know it's variable, it's shared by all of the incidents in the class. What right? kind of a public variable? It's not an attribute, it's a variable. All right? So that means if you have a class and you instantiate an object and instantiate another object and instantiate a third object, any of them will be able to modify that variable. Okay? And any of them will be able to see the modification of the other object. Clear? So let's say a variable called x equals 10. The first object makes it x equals 12. Everybody will be able to see it. Okay? That's a variable. Then you have data member. What's Is that data similar member? to a static? Huh? Is that similar to a static? Like static and C++. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, data member. What is a data member? Class variable or instance variable that holds data associated with the class and its object. Okay, that's that. And then something function overloading. What is function overloading? Uh, the assignment of more than one behavior to a particular function. The operation performed varies by the types of objects or arguments involved. Okay, so basically you have the function written in different ways. Same function, same name, written in different ways, but behaves differently. Depends on what? On the input parameters. Okay, depends on what parameters. 
and then we have the inheritance. So what is inheritance? Can James, can you take property, uh, some of the properties from a parent class to subclass or child classes? Exactly. So exactly like myself, I'm a class inherited some properties from my my parents. Okay, could be one parent, two parents in here, and the same thing with the classes. Okay, we need to have the inheritance. I will see examples right now. All right. Then you have an instantiation. An instantiation. What instantiation? The creation of the instance of the class. Which means? <laughs> so you have the class so like a blueprint. A blueprint, right? <coughs> okay. Think about the blueprint for, for a house. All right? Is the blueprint a house? Is it a real house? Can you live? inside that blueprint. No. So what you could build multiple houses from that blueprint. So class is a theory, is a blue blueprint. But you could build that means when you have a class, does it does it have storage in the memory? Okay? Does not. But when you instantiate an object then you are creating the the house out of the blueprint. Right? Blueprint, right? And then you have the method. What is method? First, there, method. Yep. A special kind of function that is defined in class definition. Okay, you read it. Tell me now, face to face. What is it? It's a function, right? It's a function, <coughs> but it's inside the class. So, how you call it with the dot operator? Okay. So, a, a method, a function defined inside a class, we call it a method. We call it a method. All right. And then the object, what is the object? Any, anybody, any object? What's the object? Um, um, it is part of the test where it's unique uh, instance. It's unique instance, thank you so much. That's, uh, that's, that's the object. And then the last thing we have, operator overloading. What's operator? Person in the, the end there. Yeah. What? Can't hear you. I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention. Okay, you don't have to pay attention. That's a question. Okay, you did not explain anything. So the question is operator overloading. What is this? It's more than one function. Okay, now you're ready. Tell me your own words. Uh, and maybe I gave example last time. So for example, so you redefine the purpose of an operator? So for example, you have the plus, the minus, the multiplication, less than, greater than. All right? This work with what? Work with numbers, right? Okay, L numbers, right? Okay, mostly numbers, right? So you could, for example, say a box bigger than a box. Is a box bigger than a box? So you, you could define, you could add a box or box, you could add something to so you could define. We'll see example for it. So that's basically what we're gonna cover today. Okay? Object oriented programming is complex thing, but in in, in Python it's kind of uh, kind of easier than other programming language. Okay. So this is the diagram of a product class. So you have a product product class. And has like attributes. How many attributes do we have in this product? Three. Three. Three, which is the name, price, and discount percent. So there is a name for any product. There is a pay surprise, pay surprise for the product, and there is a discount, ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent. What we call these attributes? What are attributes? Variables pertaining to what? To the object, right? Object created or instantiated in the book, right? And then we have methods. So each class will have methods and attributes. How many methods we have? There is one which is always mandatory, which is the constructor, the constructor. So the constructor job is to initiate the attributes values, okay? Or tell us how it will be initiated, all right? And we could have, have another methods, okay, methods, which are functions within the class. So for example, get the, the discount amount and give the discount price. 
Okay, the discount amount and the discount cost. So we have three function or three methods, I'm sorry, and we have three attributes. All right. So um, so what is the relationship between a class and object? A class is a blueprint. Blueprint, like our friend mentioned in here, or it's a prototype, right? So when you say have like a class in here, do they write a class? A class, for example, point in here. When I when I when 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 I secure this program, so let's say in the point they have, for example, x uh, okay um, um, self dot x equals x for example and self dot y equals y and this is x and y for example. So when I declare a class, do I create any memory? Do I occupy any memory? No. No. The only time I start like taking from the memory, creating the attributes in the memory, reserving memory spaces for the attributes when I create an object. Okay, when I create object. Okay? All right? You have a house blueprint. All right? Can um, can anybody live in the house blueprint? Can I spend cement and concrete and wood to build the blueprint? No. It, it happens when I create the object out of the blueprint. So there's a class and there is an object. One a class, you could create million objects out of it. One a blueprint, you could create million houses out of it. Right? Right? So that's the difference between objects. So in here, when you look in here, you have a product. What is a product? It's, it, it's, a, it, it's a class that has three attributes. What are the attributes? Name, price, discount, percent. All right, I did not do anything. Once I create an object, I could, for example, have product one, okay? Now in the memory, I have reserved a place in the memory, name, and I give it this value. And I reserve a place in the memory, and I give it this value. I reserve the th a place for the third, third um, attribute, and I give it a value, right? So we have product one, product two, product four, product three, product one thousand, product one million. I could create a million objects out of this class. Okay, so class, it has to be a blueprint, and objects is the instantiation of that of that class, okay? So, um, one format, usually the UML, uh, Unified Modeling Language, uh, which is the kind of industry, I'm not sure if it's still used nowadays a lot, but it's the way you describe. Remember when you write a project, when you write a project, um, a huge project to serve a purpose, usually your project built of so many classes, and each class built of so many attributes and methods, right? So you need to, to have like a map for your program. So UML is a very good way to, to have a map for your own uh, program, all right? All right, so let's take a look at this, uh, this uh, uh, program, okay? So class, so the product, the class, okay? So a class, we use the word a class to create a class, and we give it a name. And in Python, we prefer to start it with a capital letter, for example, product in here. All right. You could put two parentheses after that, and you put inside object, and you could not, it's your choice. And there is a method, always we have to have it in any class, which is the constructor. The constructor starts with def. What is def? To define a function. The function inside a class, we call it method, right? And we have underscore, underscore, in it. Okay, underscore, underscore. That's how you have to write it. You cannot change the name. This is it's kind of like a blueprint. Okay. And any method defined, any method defined inside a, 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 inside a class, it has to have at least one parameter. Parameter. What is the, fr what's the parameter is? The first one has to be a what? Sub. Sub. So at least one parameter which sub. Self is like you remember in Java what you call self? This. This. Right? This. Here we call it self. 
Okay? Self or this. Alright? So always when you when define, remember this. When you remember when you define a, a method inside a class, you have to start with the first parameter, which is self. Then you could have after that zero or more parameters. So in the in this initially and usually what you initialize in the in constructor? The attributes. Okay? So how many attributes I have in this one? Three. So how many I have to initialize? Three. So the first one is name. Okay, let me go in here. The first one is name, and then we have price, and then discount price. All right. So how many parameters we pass to this constructor? Four. The, the, the self and the three parameters. And then we say self dot name equals name. Where is this name coming from? From here, right? And then self dot price equals price, and self dot discount percent equals discount percent. So we have initialized how many attributes? Three attributes. Simple? All right. So uh, very simple class that has three attributes. All right. And we initialize that. By the way, in, in, in Java and C++, okay, you could, you could define, you could define the, uh, define the, the attributes without a constructor. Here you have to use the constructor. So always use the constructor, all right? Then after that, we have how many functions we have or how many methods we have to. The first method is get discount, discount amount. And as I said, any method inside the class has to have one parameter, at least one parameter, which is self, which is self. All right, so return self price, self price multiplied by so that discount price divided by hand. This is will give you what? The discount amount. So the price divided by the discount, the, the, multiplied by the discount percent divided by 100. Okay, so if the price is $10 and the discount price is $10, how much would be the price? 10 times 10 divided by 100, how much? One, that's a 10%, right? Right, that's how it is, right? Okay. And then the second method is get discount price. Get discount price. Okay. So what is discount price? Is the price after you remove or you take away the discount. Again, if I have a product ten dollars and just ten percent discount. So how much is the discount price? One. How much is the one dollar? How much is the? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The discount amount is one dollar. What is the discount price? Nine. Now at 10 minus one, which is equals nine. Simple function, just to show you how to do things in here. So a script that creates and uses product mm -hmm. object. So, you know, so what is this? What is this? A class. Where are you save it? In a file, okay? And what's the name of the file? Anything dot py, right? Just as that, it just happened that that we named it object. We named it, as you see here, we named it object that dot py, right? All right. So one healthy way of doing stuff in Python with any programming language, just save the class in a file. So if you have in your program ten classes, put them in ten files. 10 files and each file has something dot py and call everything from where from the main class from the main class so it just happened that you know we we named it object dot, dot py now what is the our main um, main program is a product product underscore viewer right so to be able to see this class in the other file what i have to do i have to import it first i have to import it Right. So what I do from objects import okay product. What's objects? It's objects.py is the file, right? It's a confusing name. I, I think it should be a different name to remove the confusion. Right? Okay. So from objects import that class. The name of the class is product. Okay. And then you have your program here. So what your program does? Now, 
if the class is a blueprint, now I need to have an object. So very simple, how I create the object? I have to give it a name. So I created two products, product one, as you see it there, product one, and product one, and product two. How I do it, product with product, with capital P is the name of the class. And then in the constructor, how many parameters I passed there? Three. So the first one would be the name. The second would be price. A discount, a discount amount. The third one would be the price, or I, I don't know. No, it's the price and the discount amount, right? I created another product, which is product two, okay? And an achievement. So now, when I called the line product one, what I did, what the program did, went to the memory, created the three places, okay? Or reserved the place for that object and had reserved a place for the three attributes. When I started the product to what I did, I went to the memory, I reserved a place for that object, and I put that amounts and values. Right? So, uh, you know, if I have like million of products, if I do loop, if I put product one, okay, inside a loop, okay, and loop one one million times, okay. How many how many how many objects I will have? Hmm? If I put product one mm -hmm. inside the loop and I loop one million times, one. how many objects I will have? One. One. Why? Because you could have more uh, objects, whatever increment. So like I, for instance. Of course. Because you assign only product one, not products. Or so like I or exactly. Something. So it's the same name. So it will be the same thing I keep. Okay. But if like I keep like changing the name, mm -hmm. okay. So product one, product two. How many times I will have? I will have like many, right? Okay. So then, I, then after that, that's my logic in here. So print a statement, print a product data. It's a product data. Print name, name. What is the value? Then spaces and substitute and the string. Okay, format. So what are you gonna print there? Product one dot name. That's how I have to define it. What's the product one dot name? Stanley thirteen ounce wood. Hammer, right? All right. Right? Then I print the price, okay, then float with two decimal point format. And then I print product one price. What's the product one price? Twelve ninety nine. And then discount percent, whatever, 62%. And then discount amount, then I print discount amount. How can I calculate the discount amount? I call a function, so product one, discount uh, percent, and here, discount, discount amount, it will give me 8 or 5 cents. And then I call, get discount price, which gave me 4.994. All right. So what we are saying that to access attribute, you have to first of all, if if for example for this class, I created like two attributes. If I need to access, if I need to create an object, so I could say for example, um, you know, um, obgy for example, it obg1, okay, equals, and then I have to call the point. Okay, okay, x and y, two and three, for example. So I created an object. All right. If I need to to assign different different values to the x, all I have to say obj one dot x equals five, for example. So now while this change to if I need to read the y, all I have to say print. Okay, obg1 dot y, and this will be printed. Right? Okay. So, how to import the classes? We already covered that. So, from objects import product. What objects? It's like we don't do, we don't say objects that py, just the name of the file, first part of the file and we import that class. 
If I have multiple classes in that file, can I import them? Yes. I could. So I put comma, for example, and the second one, the third one, the fourth one. All right. So now, how to create the object? We already saw that in the program. Okay. So product one, product two. We call, we call the name of the, the class, and then we initiate the, the values. Now, let's say that in the second one in here, I did not put, for example, the discount price. I did not put the price, for example, the discount price. I, already, or I only passed to one parameter. Will it work? No. No. Why? It will be because the, in class definition, we uh, ask for three attributes in the in each constructor, constructor initialization, and if we are passing one, so it will be like that. So I have to have three attributes, yeah. okay? Unless I do default values, then it will go to the default yeah. values, right? So it will ask for three attributes, okay? All right, so how to access the attributes of an object? It's very simple, so you have to, the name of the object, and then the attribute name, dot the attribute name. Okay, this is what I'm doing in here. I'm assigning a value, I'm ch changing the value. If I need to read a value, for example, percent, product one, dot the discount percent, it will give me the 40, it will receive the 40. So basically, how can I access, uh, how can I ac access an attribute or assign a value to attribute? The name of the object dot, the name of the attribute. The name of the attribute. Okay. Uh, how can I call a function? The same thing. The calling a function is I put the first the name of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the object, dot the name of the function. Just I have to be careful when I wrote this function, what parameters I pass to that function. So if there is five parameters, I have to pass five parameters. Unless there is a default value, right? If there is no parameters, I cannot pass parameters, right? Remember also, also when we design the method inside the class, the first parameter has to be self. But when you call the method, you never put the self. Only you put it when you create the method. When you call it, you don't put the self, all right? Okay, so in here, what I'm doing in here? So, sale price, what is this? A variable I'm creating, it could be anything, equal, Okay, product one is one object of the product dot. I'm calling a method which is get discount price. Okay, so what will happen? The, the, the compiler will go to where? To the product one. Okay, we'll run this method, it will get a result, and we'll save the result where? In the sale price. Constructor is a very simple, simple, okay? It has start with the self and as many parameters as you want, all right? And usually you say self, the, the parameter, the attribute, and the first parameter. Attribute and the first uh, um, uh, parameter. And by the way, the attribute name, the attribute name does not need to be similar to the, value, uh, the, the parameter name. The normal, yes, it will be the same. So for example, in here, that we call, we, you know, uh, um, uh, attribute name one, okay, it could be anything, and the attribute value one could be something else. Normally we make them the same, but you don't have to. Okay, so what I'm trying to say in here, self, okay, dot x equals x, right? I could, I could make this, for example, A and B. So self x equals B, self y equals A, for example. A and B, I'm sorry. A and B. There's no problem, okay? But usually you make them the same, right? If you want to change for any reason, you could change it. That's not a problem. Clear so far? All right? So a constructor with no parameters. In here, this constructor, how many parameters it has? No parameters, right? So in here, then I have to initi initiate it where inside inside the, the function. So you have to initiate the, the values, right? All right. Um, 
in here uh, code that sets attributes of objects. So here you have dot name, uh, product dot name. You're setting it to so something, and price or something, something, and the uh, uh, this kind of price you're setting it to something else. Right. In here we have a constructor with the three parameters, with three parameters. And again, the name was passed in here, the price passed in here, and this gun passed in here. All right. What I what I, I was trying to tell you that I don't have to have a name in here. I could call it N. I could for price call P, for example. And for this guy, I could call it D. So instead of name in here, what I have to put N. For a price, what I could have P. And I didn't have to have this. I could pass the D. In here. Right, you could name it anything you want. In this case, whenever I create an object, they have to pass how many parameters? Three parameters. Three parameters. In here, what I did, a constructor, but I put three parameters and I put default values. So the empty string zero zero. So now, when I create when I create the object, when I create the object, okay. If I don't pass the parameter, it will go to the default value. It will go for the default value. Alright? Okay. Okay. Alright, so in here we're talking about methods. We're talking about methods. So how you create a method? Start with the keyword. That's right. And then you give it a name and then Parameters. And the first parameter always has to be sub. That's sub. And it could have zero or more parameters, right? So in here, let's take a look at the method that returns a value here. The method of term. So def get discount, get discount. Okay. So get uh, get uh, get the name of the, the method is get discount and here get discount and you pass self to it so the discount amount is equals to self price okay multiplied by self discount percent divided by hand and whenever I need to access attribute inside the class I have to start with with South, with south, okay, with south, and then I return, I return a value which is discount amount. Why discount amount? It does not have a south. It's a, hmm? it's a local. It's a local value. So any variable I create inside, inside the method, okay, it's it's a local variable. What is the definition of local variable? Mm -hmm. The scope is within the variable. So it outside the variable has no, does not exist. Nobody can uh, see it, right? So in here, uh, in here, code that calls the method. So we have the method get discount amount. Okay. So I start with with the with the name with the, uh, the product. Okay, product dot whatever, the product dot, you know, the object dot, you know, dot whatever. Right. Uh, um, can you call, can a method in a class call another method in the class? Easily, there's no problem. Okay, there is no a problem. So, for example, in here I'm creating a method, okay, is to to uh, get discount price. So, to, to to know the discount of the price, they have to know the discount the discount amount, right? So, price, and then here I did not call attribute. What they call a method? Okay. All right. It will give you a value. It will be some extracted from the price, and that will give you your return. The value will be the discount. Right. A method of 
the product the class that accepts a parameter. So in here, for example, how many parameters I passed in here? One. One. What happened to the rest? We'll go to them. Default. Default. So if I don't specify them, then go to the default. So if I don't, if I, you don't pass self, you're gonna get this count. So again, whenever you create a method inside of inside of the class, you have to start with one with with self parameter always. Whenever you need to reference attribute, you have to start with self. When you need to call another method inside the class, you have to start with self. Start with self. Otherwise, we'll give you error. And self, if you need to think about it, it's like this in Java and C++. And this, that, this or self means this class. So this variable or this attribute inside this class. Right, I can't explain it more. Okay. If you try to, you know, uh, just use it, solve and this, okay, all right. All right. So there is a program written for you. Try it out. A console for the product viewer. So uh, um, you have the files for you to try them. Try it. So the product viewer program uh, it will it tell you it will it will print for you the three products you have, okay, mm -hmm. and um, uh, enter the product one. So enter the product one, and it will give you the data of the product one. View another yes or no button. So anyway, quickly let's go quickly over the code. I mean, it it has a class. It has a class called product, which saved in one file. What's the name of the file? Objects. Dot UI. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a class. If your program has multiple classes, create each class in a different file. Okay. And then we have another file. Okay, file which is a product of UI. So what is the first thing I have to do? Mm -hmm. I have to import that class. Otherwise, you will not be able to see it. Right. So very simple. What I do in here from objects dot .py, I don't do put the dot .py. Okay, import product. What's product with capital P? It's a class name. Alright? Let's say in that file I have five classes, I need them. So what they have to product, comma, the second one, comma, you know. Uh, then in this program I have what? Functions. So the first uh, method, uh, the first, uh, or function, I'm sorry. So functions, okay, uh, show product, there's a logic, and then show. Uh, product, this show product and just show products. Okay? Alright? Uh, so basically in here what 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 it did for I in range length of the products, product product one and uh, say that it seems like in, uh, in in a list. Okay, in a list and then print the data. And then the main file always uh, the main you know the main file will have the main function where you put code. So look how 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 it did it in the main. Take a look at this part in here. Okay. So what happened in here is to create a tuple. Tuple of what? Tuple of objects. Tuple of objects. What are the ob objects of what? So product of class. Alright? So this tuple has how many how many elements? Three. three. That means has how many um, how many objects? Three. three. And each object is an instantiation of what? Of the product. Yes. Right? So the first product is a hammer. The second one is nails. The third one is whatever. Economy bucked here. Okay, back here. With a price and discount box. Okay? And then called a function that you have to create with your product. All right? And this is the calling for me. So in this project, how many files we have? Two files. What is the first one? Okay. Objects.py, which has the class. What is the second one? The it's the product of your, which is your logic. OK? So that's basically what you need to do in all your projects. The, f the class usually you divide, you divide your program or your logic into classes. Okay? 
and the class has like attributes and has methods keep it in one file give it an am.py you need another class okay you need another class okay have have define it in one file okay have your attributes and your methods and give it a name.py then you have a main file where you call everything whereas you know you connect the dots all right that's what you you will do clear all right simple right? yes the, the, the party circle is that standard for everything or could it change from one to one which one this one is part here yeah this is you always you need to keep it in your main file okay f name equals main call main by the way you could remove the whole line here it doesn't have to happen let's just say main and call them but the problem is the problem is not the problem you could have the main function in multiple files in your project okay just let me repeat it one more time you could have a main function a main function You see the main function in here? Okay. Technically, any file, any file, any class, you could have a main function inside. All right? So basically, what this line is saying when you execute this line in here, the answer to your question, yes, always keep it. Okay? Keep it. Okay? That, that, that what it says, if you are calling the main from this file, then call the main inside this file. All right. Let's say that let's say try it home and you go. You have two files here, right? Go home and and put main function in both files, and one main from here, it will get confused. Does not know which main it gonna call. Gonna call the main in this file or the main in that other file. All right. But when you do it this way, what you are telling the compiler. I'm now compiling, I'm executing this file, so call the main which you present where? This file. Okay, so F name, that means the name of the file passed to the compiler, okay, equals to, to the main in this file, then execute this main. All right? All right. Let, let me assume that you understood what I said. All right? Great. And let me have another assumption you did not understand anything, okay, from what I said. So just stick with your question. Do I have to include this uh, line? And, 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 and yes. Okay. There is many things, you know, you, you understand in life, but you cannot explain. Explain, right? Right? That's my thing. So I hope that I explained it, but uh, any confusion so far? All right. So again, quick, quick respond to quick response one more time. That you know, usually in your project you have many files, and these files could have all of them could have technically main main function. So when you call main, which main are you gonna call? This one or that one or that one? So having this line in here inside the circle tells you I called it from here, then call the main of this file. Simple? Simple? Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right, so the UML now, uh, so UML diagram for, okay, uh, for two classes that use composition. All right, so now, what I'm trying to do in here, I'm creating a die, what is a die? Die, okay, die. And when you flip it, it will give you a number from one to six, right? Okay, so that's the value. And what you're gonna do with the what 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 function you do with the die? Roll. So that's a die. You know the physical die. That's how we make it in the program. It has a value and a function. Roll will give you a value. Save it somewhere, right? Right? And there is dice. What dice have? Multiple die. A die has multiple dice. Now, dice is not having multiple dice. Okay, these are confused, right? So, 
a die has multiple die of this, right? So, if, and if you have multiple die, what is the best way to group them together? Put them in the list. So, dice has a list of what? Of die. What is die? A class. Okay. And has add a die. So, I could add more dice and I could what do? Roll them. So, if I have five die, I could roll all. So, the first one gave me five, the second two gave me two and three, and then four and five, right? Okay. So, now how many classes they have? In this figure, how many classes they have? Two classes, right? Okay, what is the first class? Doc. It has how many functions? One. What is it? Roll. How many value, how many attributes? One. Which is the value? Right? I wish I had a die. Anybody had a die in here? No? Alright? That's what is a die, right? Okay. And what is dice? Multiple die. Alright? So, how many functions it have? Two. Add a die. Okay. I mean, I could have zero or one or two or three or four or five or hundred dice. Add a die. Okay. And roll all. I should add one more, which is remove a die. I have ten. I need to remove one. Becomes nine. Right? I cut. And how many attributes it has? One. Any attribute has a type. What is the type of the attribute? Is a list. What is list? An object. Okay. Object of what? Of of multiple die. Of multiple die. That's simple, right? Okay. As simple, right? You know. I wish it's just you know different names. You know. What, what can we do? All right. All right. So that's what it is. Okay. Import random. Why I need a random uh, library? Because a die is supposedly random. Like throw it like that, right? Give you six, four, one, right? Let's have a random function, right? So I have to create how many classes? Two, Two classes. The first a class called die. die. And we learned that in Python we prefer the name of the class it starts with capital, capital letter die. And don't forget always the column. All right? We put the column. Then self. We always start with one method. What is the method that we have to have? Constructor. constructor. And the constructor always has to start with one parameter, which is self. self. Right? So what I did in here, self dot value equals one. So what's the default? If I don't roll it, one. One. It's one. So I'm done with the constructor and with the value. Then roll. What I do with roll? I have to generate a random number. This random number between one and six. six. Why I put seven in here? Because remember in the range that the first one is inclusive, the last one is exclusive, right? So when I say one to seven, that means from one to six. Okay? One to six. If I remove one and seven and I put six, the range will be from where to where? Oh, thank you. You're studying, guys, doing your homeworks. I'm proud of you, okay? If I put seven, the range will be? One, zero to six. Have you seen die, die with, with, with zero number? No. So that's how we fixed it, from one to seven. So random, random, okay? And this will be saved where? In the self that value. Remember any attribute inside the method, we have to always proceed it with self. We have to always proceed it with cells, okay? It cannot be any simpler. The first class is done, okay? If I am orthodox, what I will do? I'll put it in a separate file, and then in the file what? Die.py, for example, okay? But I'm not that orthodox today. We'll, we'll, we'll put them in one file, okay? The second class is what? Dies. And we have to start with constructor. We don't have to, because usually we start with constructor. All right? And we have to dash one parameter, zero parameters actually, but we have to start with self. So list, what I did in here, is an empty what? List. All right? Then I have to create a method, which is add a die. So what I have to pass to it? 
Okay. Thy what? Thy yeah. object. Thy an object. Okay? So, how I add element to a list? Okay. Append. Okay. Built in function append. So, self dot list dot append. And what again append to it? The die that I pass to it. Center. Then, roll all. Roll all. So, for die in self list. Remember that list, what, what, what lists have? I traitors. I traitors. Okay? Like for has I traitor. For X in a group. Remember? For element in list. That we call it built in I traitors. In C++ and Java, you have to write a lot of code to be all of that. By traitor, I traitors are written for you in Python. Okay? Right? So for die, okay, very confusing. If I were, if I write the code, I say for x, for example, x, okay, any any value, okay, for x in self list, okay. What I'm doing here, go to that object and what I'm calling, roll. Okay, so let's just take more time. So what we said. And believe me, you have to listen to every single word they say in here. All right, because it will save you a lot of time when you read it. So we said, we said, we said that every method I call within the class, it has to be preceded with self. Why? Not to confuse it if you are calling other classes. So in here, I do not proceed with self. Why? Because this method is not part part of this class. Coming from where? The other class. All right. That means I could replace self with what? Dice. Dice. I could replace all the self is in here with the name of the class. The name of that class. So just to s make it so it's easy, instead of, I mean, like when we talk, I am teaching. I am enjoy enjoying teaching you. I am enjoy talking to you. I, right? I could replace I with what? Shakur is teaching. Shakur is, you know, enjoying talking to you. Shakur is tired. He wants to go home early today. Whatever, right? So the same thing is happening in here. All right? And instead of Okay, and self means the name of the okay? class. If I'm using a function, a method from other class, I have to proceed with the name. Okay. Very simple. Yes. But would that affect that it's not a capital from the class, right? No, because die in here is what? It's the object. Which object? Here. Object. Oh, okay. Yes, it's part of it. All right. This goes in here. So this is in here. I could name it Y, for example. Okay. Y. But when I initiate it outside, how I call it? With the capital die. Y equal double the capital die. Okay. So the option. See in here. I think that's the die in the loop, right? And for for die in self dot Yes, in here. I mean, you're right, it's in here. Okay, the value. Okay. Die and selfless, okay, die. Okay. Yeah. But what is inside the, the list? A group of dice. A group of dice. A group of die, multiple die. Okay? All right? So it's a very, I mean, very simple. I mean, once you, you know, you, you get the hang of it, it's a very simple. All right, so this is an application we run it before. I mean, like in here, enter the number uh, five. So your roll is one, two, okay, roll again, whatever. Okay, so. So this is the main function. So we created two main, main class. So what we call them, like classes, we have two classes, the die class, we have the dice class, and we have the main class. So the main class needs two classes. So oh, same what we do from dice import dice, dice, dice and die. So the first dice was supposed to be dice dot py. All right. 
I mean, myself, if I write the code, I'll write it wisely. I mean, just I uh, have completely different names, not to confuse, confuse me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the name of the file, all right? So let's say I named the first file Shakur. So it will be from Shakur import dice and die, right? Then it has the main function. Okay, so this is the main class, the main function, give friends, whatever, and then in here get the number. So ask the user how many die you're gonna need. Alright? And then after that what they have to do, okay, dies, okay, dies in here. Okay, so in here I created what they have created in here. An object of dies. How many attributes it has? One, which is a list of Die. Mm -hmm. So for i in range count, what is the count the one the user entered? So what I'm doing in here? Creating individual die. The first die, the second die, the third die, the fourth die, the fifth die. And then what I'm doing in, in here? I'm adding the die to where? To the dies. Adding the die to the dies. I hope that will not die by the end of this lecture. <laughs> so many times. All right. All right. So it's a simple, right? I hope it's not confusing. And then after that, you know, what you do? Now you added five dice for the die, multiple die, to five die to the dice. Now you have to ro roll them all. So you create a while through. Okay, dice, roll all. Print your roll and whatever. No logic. Anyways. And we have. I have seen how it runs, we have seen how it runs, and it's like that, so just try it out when you go home. A die class that uses Mythos to provide encapsulation. Okay. Alright. So something is 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 weird that we learned in in Java and C, you know, when we create attributes, for example, there's three different classes, right? And public. And there's private and there's protected, right? It's not so strong in Python, but it's there. So, what's the idea of making an attribute a private? Keep it local to the password, the accessibility. To control the accessibility to it. So, basically, you cannot directly alter it or change it. You have to, if you need to change it, or actually you have to change the proof. A getter or a setter, right? A getter or setter through another function for protection. So you cannot, for example, like there in the board, you say in here, for example, in here, we say, for example, obg1.x equals 5. If the object, if the x is a private, you cannot do that. It will give you error. To be able or to change the value of attribute, you have to use it through a getter setter. To read a value you have to get it through a getter. Okay? That's the whole idea, okay, of having a private attributes. Clear? Okay? To protect the variable that is not altered or chilled by mistake through your programs. So the only way you could alter it by using a setter function and the only way to read it by using getter function. Alright? There is no protected variables in here attributes in Python, there is in C++, there is in Java, there is none in here as far as I know. Okay, so we have a public and we have private. That's number one. In Java, how we can make a, 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 a attribute a public or a, a private? By preceding it with the keywords, which, what are the keywords? Public or private or protected. And here we don't do that, we don't have these words. What we do? Just we, we proceed the value with underscore, underscore. That will make it what? Alright? Okay. So simple. So here the value preceded with underscore, underscore, that means it's what? Private, private attribute. Private attribute. And then you have, one, once you have a, tr a private attribute, you must know that you need what? Getter and setter. Getter and setter. You cannot go change it like we do there. So that's why we have in here get value function and we have set value function. Public methods for getting and setting the attribute. So once you make a variable private, you have to add two functions for that attribute. 
gather and setter. If you have two attributes, private attributes, how many functions you have to add? Four. Gather and setter for each one. Mm -hmm. All right. If you have three private attributes, Six. how many functions do you have to add? Six. Six. I'm teaching you math now. Trying to wake you up. All right? All right? And so on and so forth, right? All right. And then the rule, which is what? Another public method. Another public method. Clear? If you remember from your Java classes, you also had private and public unprotected methods, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have that here. So, the attribute, either public or private. Okay, public is a life. Insecure program is a life. If it's a private, to be able to read it or set it, I have to have two functions, setter and getter. Simple, cannot be anything. All right? All right. So, so the double underscore identifies the attributes that are private. All right. So, the I class that uses properties to provide input to. So, the first one in here is what? Private attribute. We're going to go now to apply it to where? To our program. Right? Our program. We already wrote a program. Die dies and the main right so in here instead of value instead of making the public we make it what private and a value what is value in here public property where i can get get the value instead of value so all right i'll explain that in a second so the older way of doing it by having two functions called setter and getter. And there is something in to make accessing the function easier or the methods easier. There's something called at part. It's good in a second. Okay? And then the role which is public, a public method. Okay? Alright, so take a look in here. Die class with with a public attribute name value. So in here. So value, is it public or private in here? Public. public. Is it initial and it's initialized to one, one, right? So that means whenever whenever I create this object, it will have one attribute and it's initialized to what? One. To one. By default to one. Alright? And in here I have the role and you know uh, and ha that's how I, I, I create the value. Like before, right? So in uh, code that directly, as so in here what I do in, in my program, okay, let's say in my program I said die that value equals 10. Will it work? It will print. It will work. Okay. Is this line legal? Is it legal? You go to jail if you run this line. <laughs> Why? Because the die is supposed to be what? Random. You're not supposed to sign, sign a value for it. So, pr pr programmatically, it will run. Okay, it runs. But because it's just a bla uh, it's like pr public and it's not secure, when you run this code, okay, die that value equals 10, it will work. But this is not, the logic is false because the value has to be random. All right? Think about that you're creating a lottery system, okay? And you know you are awarding millions of dollars, all right? And you're fooling people inside the code by doing this assignment in here to give it the to give the winning ticket to to somebody you know, right? You cannot do that, right? Okay, so that's not it. so. It will work, but it's illegal, right? So the best thing for the variables that needs not to be changed to make them what private, make them private. You got the point, all right? So look in here. So the die class with a private attribute named value. So in here what you have? Okay. So you have value. Is value public or private here? Private. 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 How we know that? Underscore, 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 right? Then to be able to read it, the only way to be able to read the value, I have to create a function called get, get value ready. return self underscore value. Okay. It seems like silly. It seems like silly. Why I have to create a function? Just to read it, I could just read it right away. Okay, for extra protection. For extra 
protection, right? It's exactly, let me give you a silly example, a lot of silly examples, okay? Like for example, when you go deposit a big amount in a bank. I know you are not, vi not there yet, you didn't have a big job, but you will eventually, you know, you'll go like with a half a million dollars, okay? <laughs> All right, and they give it to the cashier, okay? So she will count it, but she has to call another person to count it, right? One person not because it's like a big amount. Actually, they do it over thousand dollars, I guess, if they don't have the machine, right? The same thing is the kind of of a second line of protection, right? Now, to be able to to so this is to be able to get the value. I have to function, all right? All right. Why I don't set the value in here? Why I don't have function to set the value? I don't need it. I don't need it because it has to be assigned randomly. Okay? So now if I try to assign a value, to, can I assign a value? I can't. If I want to, I could add that function, but in this logic I cannot at all. I cannot change the value, right? So then row. Okay? And this, how to assign the value in here? Random. Okay, it will be same here. So when I say die, I'm creating a die. Then die underscore value, what will give you here? Error. Big error. You cannot assign a value. Okay, but why? Because it's a private. The error message will give you this message. Code that indirectly sets and gets it. So I'm creating a die, die row, then print die. Now through the row, through the function, I could assign the value. You got the whole point? You got the point what's a private and public and all of that? So in here, the die class with methods that uh, access private attributes. So in here, so what you have, die, okay. So is it private or public? Private. Why? Double up. Double up. Then I have the get value. You read it, we get the value. What I'm doing in here? Set value. Okay, so what I do, self and the value, I'm setting the value. If the value less than one or the value greater than six, what are you going to do? Raise value now because it should not be it should not be less or less than one or more than six, right? Else, and this is the value. So in this in this in this uh, class, I could get the value and I could set the value, but through what setters and getters? I cannot do it directly. All right. So and then I have the row the row uh, value. So, so again, in here, I'm creating the die, and then what I'm saying in here, set value to six. So what's the value will be? Six. When I print the value, how can I read the, read the value? By the get function. The only way I can read it by what? The get function, by the get value. And so get the value. Then, all right? So let's, let's summarize what I said. I need to give you a break for five minutes. All right? So private, what is a private? It's an attribute that the only way I could or change by functions, all right? And it's a very simple in Python. How can I make it a private? How can I, sorry. How can I make the a private attribute a private? By proceeding it with underscore, underscore. Are you speaking right here? No? Okay. Underscore, underscore, right? Okay. Uh, so, um, all right. So, so, do we have or do we have a, 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 a protected, for example? We don't have that. Do we have a private or protected or public function? We don't have that. Only the attribute, right? All right. So, the old-fashioned way we have it private. We create two functions, setter and getter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say that you know I don't want to set. Uh, in my logic, I don't want to set them at all. So do that set. So you'll never be able to set it. Okay? Set it. Okay? Now, this is the older way. Set it again. There is a, a modern way called property, which we'll explain to you after the break, and you have only five minutes. <laughs> So let's continue. Uh, two annotations for getting and getting and setting properties. All right. So 
I mean, I mean, Python tried to make things easy, something called properties. So it's just kind of, kind of formatting the, 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 the methods. All right, anyways. So the first one is add the property. Just memorize it like this. And, the, and this is used for what? For the get. Okay? And the second one is property name, that good name, whatever, dot setter, and that's for the setter. And we'll see how to use it. Just shortcuts, how to write the code, okay? It's called a shortcut. All right? So the first one again for what? For getting. And the second one for setting. And the property name is what? The class name. All right. Uh, so for the die class, for example, in here. OK, so in here what we did, we created a, a, a attribute, which is private. OK? And instead of giving like a name different different than name than the attribute, if I would like to use the value, so all I have to put the add property in one line, and I define a function, and the function will have the same name as attribute value. Okay? So when you see add property and the function beneath it, that will be what? The gather. Okay? The gather. So the define the va def def value self, return self underscore. So what is this? The gather. You could write it in two ways. Okay? You could create a function called gather or set get, or get, get value or whatever. Or you could have it. And this would be more much more easier to read. Let's say that you have many attributes. Let's say that you have two in the class. You have like ten attributes. So if you're gonna set, you're gonna create like setters and getters for each one of the attributes. How many functions are you gonna need? Two. Ten times two, twenty. And all of them will have different names, right? Okay. So if I would like to make it easy, that I need just to use the name of the attribute to get and to set. I put add property. The function beneath it will be what? Gather. The gather. And they have to give it the same name as the attribute. And to write the setter is a value, which is the value, which is the name of the property, that setter. And that will be what? That setter. So this is getter setter. Using what? Properties. Shortcuts. Feel free to use it. OK, that's what good programmers use. You want to use the older technique that you learned in Java and and C++, you could do that, okay? So that's, that we call it using properties, using properties. And it's like a dec decoration. So again, can you explain that value dot setter? What? Is there is value dot setter, which means. So, so you don't have to use value setter. You use the same name, value, value. That's the whole idea. The whole idea, I don't want to change the name of the function, okay? So. I don't want to name the name of the function. So when I save a function called value, then it's a setter. Another function is value, but has the at value dot setter, then it's a setter. Set. The first one is a function. Yeah. All right. So let me construct. Take a look for a second at this. Okay. So in here, and take a look at the previous one in here. So for that, what I have to do? Okay. Create a function get value. Okay. Set value. I don't want to change the name of the function. I need just to keep it that value. So I have the creator, which is the property, like this. All right? If it confuses you, don't use it. <laughs> yeah. How is it a shortcut? So it takes to write together and set of methods. I mean, it really doesn't seem to be a shortcut at all. You're essentially right in saying getter and set of methods anyway. Just keep the name. Maintain the name. So to keep the name, you know, the name of the attribute the same. Okay, so basically we're using properties. So you have the name of the attribute used three times to declare it, to set the cutter, to set the setter. Right? It's really confusing if you have self dot value without the other schools. Which one? You're saying that the function name is linked to the so the, the function name must be equal to this. Okay, the value must be must be equal to the name of the attribute. 
right? and he called the curator. All right. Myself, when I saw it first time a few years ago, I did not like it. Okay, after a while, you will find it useful, especially when you're writing bigger classes with multiple attributes. Okay, and and and, and it becomes less confusing when you start calling these functions from multiple. So you forgot set value, set to what they call a function and all of that, right? So it becomes like much more, you know, much more easier to do. Because you set it up like this, now from outside, from outside, you could use, I will see, we'll show you a second. So for example, in here, die, you're creating like an object of a die. So what you did in here, okay, die, that value, and that there's there's a bigger advantage. Okay, die that value equals to what? To six. To six, right? Yeah. Alright? But if I use like function setter or function getter, I will not be able to use this sentence. I have to call that function. I have to call that function. Alright? And in here I was able to read it die that value. If I'm using the, the setter, what should I do? Die that value equals set value parenthesis six. Alright? So that's it. anyways. So you <coughs> like it, you use it, you don't like it, you could use the old way. Alright, that's fine. So in here you're creating a die object and then you're trying to assign minus one for it. So it will give you an error. It will give an error message. Why? Because we have a function. When, if it's like you know, in here, in here, if it's less than, if it's less than one, it will raise an error. It will raise an error. All right. So that's the diagram for 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 program. So now we made the list also private. The values are private, right? All right. And yeah. So import random. Uh, for the die class, the value is private, and I use the property to set up the value and uh, to get up the value. And I, I don't want to set up the value huh? because the only way to set it up is through the wrong, the wrong function. When you look at the dies, so the list is what a private attribute. All right, in here. To to get the value, to get the value, so def list, okay, and I'm I'm saving the I'm uh, I'm converting the list in tuple, okay, I'm saving it on tuple, and I'm returning uh, tuple, okay, as always. In here, in here, what I'm doing in here, and here to add a die to, and here row of. Same thing with the previous pro program for the price. In here, what I made, what I made it private. Price. Price only. Okay, the name and the discounted price is a public attribute. Why he did it like this? It's your call. It's your program needs. So if there is like attribute that I need to protect, make sure to go through a, a rigid procedure to change to set and get. I have to go there. In here, the price is a public property. You could use public property. So, once I have, once I have, once I have to, once I have the attribute as private, I have to have setters and functions or property. Two ways to do it, right? And you could design the program for it. I have to skip that one for my time. Okay. Okay, now how to work with inheritance? Inheritance. What is inheritance? That you could have a function, uh, you could have a class inherited from other class. Anyways, any class you create on your own is inherited from where? Object. So the main, the first class is object. So list is inherited from where? Object. String from object, tuple from object, our point class from object. Okay, by default from object. All right. <coughs> so.
So in here, for example, let's say that they have a product. They have a product. So a product has how many attributes in here? Three. Name, right, discount, price. And how many functions? How many methods? Three methods, right? All right. So some some of the some of the products have a special special thing with them. So for example, book. I created a class, a book, and the book is inherited from product. That means every book is a product, but not every product is a book. All right. So what I did, what are the attributes for the book? I have four attributes. So name, price, discount price, I added one is the author. Okay? So the book, how many functions it has? Four. Three from the parent and one Alright? Let's take a look at the movies. So every movie is a product, but not every product is a movie. And how many attributes it has? Four. I added the year. And how many functions they have? Four. Four. All right. So that's the idea of the inheritance. So basically, the movie and the book inherit everything from product, but not vice versa. But not vice versa. Right? Okay. So let's see how we write the classes in here. <coughs> so first of all. How can I do the inheritance? How I create the class? Okay, so let's go directly here. So class product, that's the product. We already created the product before, right? So what's the product? You start with what first? Constructor. Constructor. Start with that? Constructor. All right, so class pro product, def, uh, okay, okay. So you have the name, the price, and the discount value, the discount percent which is zero price zero zero and so right so name price discount price and discount right oh okay all right so then we have in here what we have in here three methods as we saw before anything new in here nothing new all right then we could go down in here now we have to create a book so the book inherited from where product so between the parentheses, what they put? Super product. So the parent is product, all right? And then the f I have to initiate the attributes. How many, the book, Four. how many attributes has? Four. 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 So three, I'll use the constructor of the product. So what I did in here, def in itself, name, price, discount price and offer, okay, right? And then the first thing in that method, what I did, I called the constructor for product. So the constructor for product initiated for me what? Name, price, and discount percent. And I have to add the author, so self-author equals author. All right? So I have called, so the constructor of the book called the constructor of the parent that initiated for me how many three attributes and the one remaining I do it by myself in the program right do I have to do that I don't I could like rewrite uh, initiate a different way that's fine but since it's a product you know it makes sense to call the constructor for a product right self author and you know in the self author equals to the author. All right. Now, what you notice, let's go back in here. So, what do you notice in here that you have get description? What is this? A method. Overriding get description. So, it's the same name, the same thing, but it's overriding. Over writing it is the same. It's not a different. Okay. It could have different fonts, no problem. But this one is overwriting. Okay, it's not overloading. Overwriting. So overwriting, you have two functions behaving differently. 
All right? So overriding, overriding that get description method. So get description, self, return, okay, product, get description. So what I did in the get description, I first called the get description from the parent, and then I added to it by self open. All right? I don't have to call the parent. It could be completely different. But it makes sense now to call in this application to call the parent what method, and then I add modify it to it because usually if it's a product, you need to print the three elements, the three attributes. But if it's a book, I need to add to it what the author. The author. It's a movie. Maybe I need to add to it what the year it was produced. All right. Very simple. So very simple. All right. So again, inheritance. What is inheritance? You have a parent class that has attributes and has methods. methods. And you have children, children, or ch child class that ha it could have a new attributes and a new methods and overridden methods. Overridden methods, all right? So, three versions of the get description. So you have three versions of the get description. So you look at the first one, it, it's, it's, uh, it's in the super class, in the parent class, get description, as you see in here, returns the name only. In the book, what does it return? It's going to call this function first, and then by, it returns the name by the author. In here, in the movie, what does it do? It will call the parent, and then it will return the year. Right? So nice, so elegant. You know, you could call and you could call that elegant. What happens if you leave out the self in the get description? What? Uh, so in product that get description self. Yes. What happens if you leave out the self? You have to you have to put the self. This is this is defined where inside these all the three defined where inside the class. So remember in the class for any method you have to start with self. self. And here we are not calling the functions. Here we are defining the functions. Oh, um, not in the definition line, but in the return line. Where Within a product get okay okay again. I mean, where is this defined? It's, it's defined in the parent class. Yeah. In a class, yeah, right? Yeah. So in a class, always whenever we call a function, we have to start with what? Self. Self. Right? So any, remember that any method that you create in a class that you have to use a self when you're calling the... When you're calling it inside of a class. Inside of class. Okay, but outside of a class you don't. No, you don't. Got it, because yeah. it's inside the class. That's why you said yes. got it. Yes. Right. Yeah. So the subclass only refers to the super class, not the previous subclass above. So will the movie subclass return name, author, and year, or just name and year? Okay, what we'll do, it will first product get description, okay. which is there. From what what does it do? What okay. else to return? Name. It's the name. So right? only name. And then, and then you know, plus, yeah, it the will put your branches, string, oh. to convert self here. It will print for you the year. So in here, okay, in here it, it will, okay, in here from objects import what? Product book movie, right? So in here show products like we saw before, and in here we create the product, another product, another product, okay? And when we printed it, look how it's printed. The first one, it printed the product without anything. The second one, it, because it's a book printed by the author and the third one it put between the two provinces the year. Alright? Whenever you know I print the description, it will call the right uh, the right uh, one. Okay. 
So when you have multiple classes and multiple objects, sometimes you get confused. This object belongs to what class, right? So for that, we have is an instance. Is an instance is a function. You, you check the object, is it, if it's part of that class, right? So sometimes, you know, you need to, <coughs> to do that. So for example, in here, it, in here, for example, if an instance product, okay, is it part of the book? The answer would be true or false. And according to that, you do whatever you want. All right? So depends on your logic, you always could check the instance of the echo. OK. <coughs> uh, the console, OK, anyways, uh, let's move on. So in here, for example, you have a product, a class product, okay? Uh, so it has a three, uh, three attributes, you initialize them, and then you have three methods. In here you have the book, okay? And for the book, the first thing I called, I called the constructor of the parent, and then initialize the author, and I called the give description, overridden the, the description. For the movie class in here, as you see, we call again the parent constructor, and then I initialize the year, which is a fourth attribute that they have added. And then what I did, I called, uh, or, 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 I overridden, uh, overrode the, the, I have overridden the get description method. All right. Let me put it All right. <coughs> so, so that's your question in here when you ask the product uh, viewer, you know, you know, uh, in here the if man, many class. So that's that's in the many class we have to include this all the time. It calls that. There is so many functions. Okay, when you see a functions or methods, functions and function methods, which which starts with underscore underscore and ends with underscore underscore. What do you know about them? They are inherited. Inherited from the object, okay? So all of this you could use in any class you want, but it's not guaranteed they're gonna work right for you. Alright, so you have to, what you have to do? If you have a function, listen to the question. If you have a function written in a parent class and you need to use it in the child class, what do you have to do? Override. Override it. Override it to fit your cause, to fit your purpose, override it, right? Okay? Right? All right. So in here, for example, str, self, what is this function? It's the print function. You know when you say print? That's a print function. So the print, the print is the elegant name for this function. All right? So if I need, when I say, when I say, for example, when I say print this object, by default, what does it print? The memory location. Is it useful for me, the memory location? No. So what I have to do? I have to override this print function inside where the class to print something useful for me. Right? Override it to imprint something useful for me. What is useful for me inside this class? The name of the product that discounted price, the final price, for example. Right? So let me repeat what I said. There is so many functions. You'll see them that ends and starts with underscore underscore. That means these functions are inherited from parent class. All right. To be able to use them nicely in my class, I have to override them. We call it overriding what? The function, the method. All right. One example in here is underscore underscore str, which is the print function. In my example in here, in the die example or the product example, when I say 
print this object. By default, it will print what? The memory location. No, you. If I needed to print useful, let's say if I needed to print the name of the product, I have to do what? Override. I have to do override. Overriding, what does it mean? Just try the function again to do whatever you want. All right? So let's, let's check it out. Maybe there's example. OK, so the syntax for overriding in here. Look in here, for example, in here, def. OK, return. OK, string. Uh, return string uh, for the object. So, so in here, to override it, for example, in here, inside the function, return self name space bar, then price space bar, and then discount reason. All right. So when I did that, now this is what does it do? Override a print function. Override a print function. Let's try it. I create a product. The product has how many attributes? Three. Name. Price and discount. Print product. Print product. What what did it print for me now? See it? What did it print for me? Why? Because I override it in there. If I don't try this function, what get a print for me? This trash. Objects, product, object, the memory location. All right. So basically, what we learned from this, for any class you create, you could modify the print function to print useful information for you. And override. All right. Okay. So also iterators and next. What is iterator? Okay. I mean, it's inherited also. So for example, I mean, the nice thing about for loop, for example, when you say for x in a range, why it works? Because there is inherited what? Iterator and pointer, all right? So now I have a, a product, okay, list of product. Okay, I could create iterator so I could, I could, for example, say for die in dice. So I have to create an iterator for that. Okay? And for any class you create, you could create with two functions that you have to modify. The iter and the next. So let's take a look in here. So class dice, for example, okay? It has what? A list in here. All right. So, uh, so the first thing, I have to set the index. The index has to be where? Minus one, pointing to four. Because every time I iterate, I have to move one forward, right? And then in, in, in that's the, the iter, the self-index will be minus one. And then you have the next. What does the next? X, it will it measure the length of the, le the, 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 the list minus one. Why is minus one? Because we count from zero. 0, 1, 2, minus 1, right? And then whenever we execute the next, it will go, the index will be plus 1, and it will fetch the next element. Fetch element. That's why when we run a code, for example, like this, okay, for i in range 5, for i in range 5, 5, range 5, die equals, you know, die, you know, you initiate again, and then you add a die. After we, we override the, the next and the iter, look in here what we can do. We could say for die and dice. For die, for x and dice. So now we mean this is class what? Iteratable. Okay? And once you do that, your programming becomes very easy whenever you need to use the new logic. You don't have to, you could do things by writing it like a bigger code. But creating iterator, and you do not do anything. I and mean, if you look at the original code of the iterator, maybe like two pages. All you have you did in here, overridden the 
origin, uh, original iterator. Okay, very simple. Two things, and then after that you'll be able to iterate through the program. So because of that code, you're able to iterate. Okay, why the value is one, 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 one? Remember the value when we initiate is one. one. The console, if the dice class does not define the iterator, it tells you find error dice object is not iterable. It's not iterable. Right. So, anyways. Also, you could create your own. Um, um, okay, now let's go back to the, uh, the, 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 the exception. So this exception, okay, all classes, right? Initiated from where? From the exception class, right? So for example, here you, you have six, for example, six common exceptions. You could create a class of exceptions. To be inherited from one of these, right? So, I mean, yes, there is an exception, you remember, in the chart last time I showed you, but you could create your own exceptions. That's why you are able to raise exceptions. How you create exception object? By creating a class. It's just a class. So, everything is objects in here. Even exceptions is an object, right? You could create it yourself. So, so for example, in here, class, custom error name. And exception name, this is inherited from where? Exception and pass. Okay, for example, here data data accent error and inherited from exception. You could create exceptions as you wish. As you wish. I leave this for you. Moving on. All right. Remember when I told you when I tell you that you see, you see a uh, you see like a, a function that starts with underscore underscore ends with underscore. What is this? It's a function inherited from somewhere, right? One of them is dog. I, I gave you a, I will give you a list of many. Uh, just a second. So dog. What does dog? It gives you the dog string. You know what's dog string, right? Is the first like string after the declaration of the class or the function when you do man or help it will get so in here so a class my class this is my second class then a equals 10 defining a function so when I say print my class dot a what does it print 10 what is a class variable remember it's a class variable it's not attribute it's a class variable right Okay, then when I say print my class dot function, what does it do? It's so gonna call the, the function, right? Okay, and what does print my class function the, the location? When I say my class underscore underscore doc, what gonna do? Call a function which is not written in here but inherited from where? From the object. What does it print? This is my second class. So this is like the doc. Okay. Right. All right. So many, many inherited classes that you could overwrite the way you want. All right. So class special call cla class special functions. Class functions that begins with double underscore double underscore called special functions as they have special meaning. So th this is a very nice. Let me introduce to you a, a very special, special function. What is this? Constructor. Constructor, right? Function that called constructor. This link, there is a long list of special functions. Take a look at them. All right. Let's talk about multiple inheritors. So in here, what, what happens in here? We have a class that inherits from two classes. Inherits from two classes. So this is a class, okay? So let's say this class has a dad and a mom. Okay, so you could inherit from a dad and a mom. 
and the brother and the sister as much as you want. Okay? All right? So, so in here, as you see, class space one, class space one, okay, and then class space two. This is independent classes. Then I created multi derived, so the multi derived class is inheriting from two classes, base one and base two. And it's, it's a very important to know the order of the inheritance. So, search order, I mean, I mean there's something called search order, MRO, uh, method of resolution order. Okay, it, ha it will depend on how you, I, I mean, for example, if you do class space two above the class space one, it will work differently. Okay, it will work differently. Okay, so search order is, order for this, it starts from where? For the model derived, then it goes to class two, because that's what was next, and then it goes to base two, and then it goes to base one, and then it goes to the object. This order is also called uh, uh, linearization of the multi derived class, and the set of rules used to find this order is called method resolution order. All right, so it's a very important in the order we do the inheritance. So what is this? So this is we call it we call it multiple inheritance and multiple inheritance. All right, it makes sense. I mean, like in, in, even in a human life, right? I mean, like you inherit from your dad, mom, multiple places. But in here, what you have in here, multi-level, multi-level. So, derive two inherits from derive one, and this inherits from the base, right? Right. So let's say that the base has two attributes, and let's say derive one has three attributes, and let's say derive two has one attribute. So when I, I create object in here, how many attributes I have? Two plus three plus one. If I create objects in here, how many attributes I have? Two plus three. If I create one object there in the base, how many attributes I have? Two. All right? And I could have multi-level inheritance. All right? So, what what good example for three inheritance, for example? Great grandchild. Hmm? Great grandchild. I mean, application. Oh. Let's talk about the product, for example. No. I mean, student, uh, department, and uh, subject. So you have like a car, and then you have like a Volvo, and then you have like a truck, and then you have like a pickup truck. Yeah, but th these are not subcategories. Right? It has to be subcategories. So, for example, let's say the base is a product. Okay, let's say the derived one is a book, all right, and let's say driver three is a movie. So the movie out of the book, movie made of the book, movie is a product made of a book, which is another product, and the book is a product. But for example, in your example, in, uh, in, in the auto cars, for example, so for example, we could make the brand. Toyota, for example, okay, Toyota, and uh, what is sub of the Toyota, for example, is, um, uh, so we have Toyota, what what we call uh, Camry, Corolla, and all of that, what do you call this? Cars, automatic, car. Types, what, I mean, what do you call it? Yeah. Models. Models, models, okay. You know, okay, you have to do your registration to remember all of these. So you have the, the, the manufacturer, then you have the model, all right? And inside that, what you have? EX, SX, LX, whatever, right? So the LX, so LX could be, could be Corolla LX, Camry LX, Camry SX, whatever. And all of this belongs to Toyota, for example. So it's like, a bigger umbrella, 
and then you have smaller umbrella and a smaller umbrella. And and designing that you had example, right? Uh, not in the second line. No. Okay. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> all right. So uh, I apologize. Well, I was just <laughs> gonna say like price of like a vendor and then a reseller and then like the person who's buying from the reseller, just like. Each it has, has to be a subcategory, a subcategory, right? Yeah, that's why I said okay. not so much anymore. So, for example, if you're going to say, for example, uh, students, and you say alumni, they, they are not subcategory from each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but I think the, the car example is good. The, yeah. the, the, the manufacturer, the model, and the, okay, okay. And that's where is the talent. When you are given a project, big part of your design is to understand, you know, your logic. Nobody can tell you what's your logic, okay? I mean, that logic, okay? And how many classes are you gonna need? How many levels of classes? Do I need multiple inheritors? Do I need multiple inheritors, for example? Or it's multi-level inheritors? That's your own design for the project. That's your own logic, right? And here, it's just you're learning how to do it in a sentence, how to say it, okay? So you have to think it, and this helps you how to say it. Okay, you understand? All right. So, and it becomes very complicated because, like, you know, the search. When you search, for example, for an attribute, attribute, right? Okay. <coughs> it has to go through a sequence. All right. It has to go through uh, a sequence, certain sequence. All right. <coughs> or not attribute, actually, a function, for example. Okay. So, let's say... In all of these, in all of these, you have what you have a, a, a method that you overwrite. So that means the method with the same name is existing where? In all of them. All right. So, and when you try to call a method, which one gonna call first? Okay. Okay. All right. The, the sequence, right? The sequence, right? So it's gonna start to find it here. If it doesn't find it here, it's gonna go here, here, the sequence. That's very easy sequence. But sometimes the sequence will become very complicated. Take a look in here. Okay, so in here you have like object, you have X, Y, Z, A, B, M. Alright? So this is that's your project. You have like multiple inheritance, okay. So if you're trying to call a method in here, what is the sequence? Again, the right find here, then here or here, then here or here or here, then what's the order? So it becomes very complex and you have really to understand. Anyways, it's not a big deal because there is something called, you know, um, uh, 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 MRO. So all, if you need to know the order of the execution type print M, R O and we'll tell you. So in here, for example, it starts with the M, then you're gonna go to the B, then you're gonna go to A, then you're gonna go to X, then you're gonna go to Y, then you're gonna go to Z, then you're gonna go to the object. All right? All right. And let's say this order is not that one you want. Then you have to change the order how you establish or how you call the classes. All right? So it becomes much, much more complex. I'm sure that you, you know, for example, like last semester I gave them project to design canvas. You know what's canvas, right? The one you use, right? So that was my project for them. So you have the canvas, redesign canvas, you're on. I'm sure that you, are, you realize that you're gonna have so many classes, okay? And, and these classes depend on each other and you know, something for faculty, something for, and, and they have to create it as like, not a student canvas, it's like real canvas. You have multiple faculties, multiple courses, multiple students, students could register their class with multiple faculty, and the faculty could have multiple classes, and the student could have multiple courses, and go figure out, right? Okay, and link everything together. Okay, so in your code and you're designing it. So, all right? So it's a very important to, to, to know these, these stuff, right? What is the operator overloading? So we're talking about, we spoke about 
overriding. So what is overriding? Is to override a function, any function. All right? Overloading is like overriding, but for operators. So for the plus, for the minus, for less than, greater than, these are functions inherited from somewhere, from the R, right? So look in here, class point. When you say class point, okay? So class point, how many, how many attributes, any point, how many attributes it has? Two, what are the two? Position X, position Y. All right? It could be three, Z, we add Z, but this is two, right? In here, so in here, for example, and here I created a, an object P1, point two and three. P, point two, point minus one and two. When I say P1 plus P2, what does it do? Give me an error. And there is, I mean, how can I add point 0.1 to point 0.2? Okay, okay, so I have to override the plus operator. Then it will make sense. I have to override it, right? Okay. So what I do in here, what I do in here, so uh, I create, okay, so first of all, print. I override the print. So remember that when you write the underscore, underscore, str, underscore, if this is a print. So what I did, when I say print a point, it will return for me this, self x and six one. Let's try it together. So point one is two, three. Print p1, it returned what? Exactly like I designed it in here. So what I did in here, function over Riding, not not operator of loading, and not do operator of loading yet. In here, so in here, okay. Now let's do op operator overloading. Operator overloading. So, so what we did in here, this is a point defined. Then before I override the str, and the addition is basically a function. It's the add underscore underscore add. So what I do in here, what I say, x self x plus other x, y equals y plus the other y, and then return the point, return the point. So when I executed it in here, look in here, the first point is 2 and 3. The second point is minus 1 and 2. When I say print p1 plus p2, give me what? 1 and 5. So add 2 to minus 1, give me 1, and 3 plus 2, give me 5. Now the plus has a meaning. Why? Because I did overloading. I did overloading for the plus. And this is my logic. I could do anything. I could anything, right? Overloading. But before when I tried to this, this one gave me what? An error. So basically, in your classes you could override any function and you could overload any operator. Right? Why? Because operators are basically what? Functions. Are basically functions. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this table. So all of these operators, you could, if, so for example in here, uh, bit y, xor, alright? It's like underscore, underscore, xor. And subtraction, multiplication, power. It could over overload all of these or override all of these functions according to your needs. According to your needs. In here another example of write a comparison. Comparison. Comparison for example is less than or greater than. So what you did in here, okay less than, okay. So so you, you are powering the x plus the power of y, and you do it the other for the other point, and then you compare it. That's your logic. So now, for example, you said point one point one, is it less than point minus two minus three? Two. How how did that happen? So it's like it's like uh, what's the logic in here? Adding the x's and 
the, x, or the square of the x and the y, right? So one square plus one square, two. In here, minus two square will be four. Minus three square will be nine. Nine plus four, 13. Is it greater than greater than one? Yes, then give you true. Right? That's your logic. We put, put what logic you want. Basically, any that's what I say. Any any function you could override, and any operator you could over plot. This is the property decorator for any function. Okay. So the property decorator. Let's make a method behave like attribute. That's the only thing of. That's the nice thing about the, the decorator. It makes it makes any function behave like attribute. Okay, so you take a look in here. Person, you have the person. The person has first name and last name, right? So you init, you, you construct it first name last name. So I'm creating in here, in here, phone name self and return the. Uh, the, 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 the name and the sub name, right? When I would add property in here, okay, now I could, you know, deal with it, I could deal with it like what? Like, like uh, attribute. So in here, for example, Jane, person, has two attributes, Jane and Smith, print Jane, dot full name, dot full name. Full name is what? It's a function. Function should have what? Should have what? Prices, right? Okay. When I when I add to the a property for it now, when I call it, do they have to put the prices in here? No. Why? It it allowed us to treat a function as as a should. Okay. Is that similar to a delegate? What? Is it similar to a delegate? Delegate? Is it similar? Delegate in Java? I have no idea. I'm not a Java person. I like T more. So, yeah, I don't know. All right? So that's what it is. Property is, it's, it makes you faster, fast, you call the functions like uh, attribute. Okay? All right, getter, setter, and the lead method. So we know what's gather, we know what's setter, and also you could create another function called, you know, so for example, property will be gather. The phone name that setter, this will be setter, and you could have delete, okay, to be able to delete the function. So when you execute, you could use a function del, del, okay, and then you print it, there is nothing, right? it was delete. So you could have setter, getter, and deleter. Deleter. Okay. Yeah, you know, so. Why would you use a deleter? To to remove from the memory. Okay. So you know, I mean, usually when you when you create an object, when you create an object, it will stay until you finish executing the program, right? Let's say that you have a very heavy or intensive program that you need once you finish using this object you created you need to remove from the memory to save to speed up the program to save the memory you delete it okay so it's a little bit advanced you might know for your application you don't need it but it's really you know uh, it's, uh, uh, this is by the way it's, it's managed automatically in java and in java you don't have to to, to delete the memory Object properties using the dir function. Okay, so in here, for example, as you see in here, what we did, I mean, we created what? We created uh, a, a person uh, class, right? When I say print dir jane, jane is object of person. Look what gave me. That means all of these functions are inherited from somewhere above, right? We know a few of them, right? What we know? We know the DIR by itself, 
And we know the doc, we already saw the doc, the equal, uh, the format, what is format? It's like str, like print, greater than, we know, get, you have in it, we know what's in it, less than, okay, you know, what else you know? Uh, this one, right? Okay, and of course you have how many from there? You have the full name, the name, and the uh, surname, which is the attributes and all. So, if you need to know all the functions and attributes inherited by, okay, just run the DIR, the DIR, the directory DIR, okay, and you feel free to override any of these, override all of these, right? By the way, all this information not in your textbook. I mean, no. It's a little bit advanced, <laughs> so you know. So uh, make sure also you get them from the slide. Not to, okay. All right. So examples of special object properties. Okay, we already covered covered a few of them, right? The init, the the str, the class, the equal, the add, for plus sign, iteration for iterator with next, right? Length. All right. So for example, now now when you have when you have a list. What is a list? An object. When you try to or a string. When you try when you say the length of the of the string will give you a length. This length is something inherited from the object. Okay? You created your own class and would like uh, like the uh, like, like dice. You would like to know the length of the of the list, for example. Or that you could override this. Okay? You could override it. Okay? And then this. So so basic, basically, basically, you have to understand the structure of Python. Structure of Python is like everything Python is objects. It starts from where? From the object class. And even even the 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 the, 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 the exceptions is an object. Is a class. You could create your own, you know, exception class. All right. And everything will inherit it, I and mean, you could inherit it from the from the object, maybe other 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 also uh, other uh, classes. And when you create your design your design your project, you have a classes. You can create a class inheritance from other classes, multiple inheritors, multiple inheritors. You have to know the order that will search for a function or for a method. All right. And you have to know what are the possible because that will help you a lot. You need to know what are the possible functions in, in the object that you could override. Alright? So for example, when you create your any class you create, you need you need to be able to display it. You need to be able to print it. Or just override the underscore the R. Or the format, the same thing. That would be the print, right? If you need to use any of the operators, alright? You could just override it. Over, right, overriding me, over, overloading means reprogram it, reprogram it, I mean like how it will work, right? Uh, <clears throat> all right, so there's one more chapter, I leave it for you, it's a crazy chapter, not, not a lot of things, just tells you, it tells you, I mean it tells you how to design object to be a program, okay, That's, so you have to know for example, you start from the real world example, then you have to change it to an object or object oriented programming. So you have people, documents, facilities. Okay, how you can organize that? That's, it needs something from you. So, step one, you need to identify the data attributes. Then you have to subdivide each attribute into smaller U, U components. Then you identify the classes, and then identify the methods, and then you know, move on to identify. All right, so, so you have to. Build your own logic, and then after that you start canceling. So, for example, you have products in here. You have line items, cards, and you think you things would need to be removed from one line to another line. And then after that you start building the classes. So here, card, line item, product. You need to know the attributes. You need to know your attributes. That's your design, right? The attributes, the functions that you need, and everyone, everyone should have different design. So. It will be so ridiculous if I give you a project, if I give you a project, and then, like I find multiple groups or multiple students, give me the same design, like same design, the same name of the classes, 
same attributes and all that. It's impossible. Because, you know, myself, if I design a project tonight, and then I put it in a shelf fit, let's say I put it in a paper, I lose the paper, and I go design it in two days again, I will design it completely differently. Right? I mean, that's how it is. There's no, there's no one design. It's like he, how you think about it at that moment. And of course, and of course, that when you are writing your application, what is the likelihood that you massage everything or change everything up, upside down? There's a big chance at the beginning, right? Okay. So, what is a good advice for this? Is to try to segregate it, divide it in, 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 in segments. Okay. What is segments in programming? Process. All right. So you, as much as you can, you could divide your problem into, into classes. And what is a class? Is a code that has inputs and outputs. So, so, right? It has a structure and inputs and outputs. You could call it from anywhere. You could instantiate it. And when instantiated, that means you create the object. And this object could call any of that uh, methods, right? Methods, right? So try to have a class. Class is separated, and if I were you, okay, I will create a class in a separate file, give it a nice name, okay, test it. I have a testing bed for it. Input, output, does it do the whole function for me? Good, rest. Then I go to the second part of the, the second pl class, part of my work, and I test it and all of that, right? And the third, I mean, this is easier to say, or easy to say, if we have like one line of a class, one of my class next to the class, next to the class, like die and dice, example, all right, that's easy to, but now it becomes much more complicated if my, my classes are inheriting from each other, all right, all right, so, you know, where do I start, I start from the bottom one or from the upper one, I think from the parent, right, and I go to the sub-parent, sub-parent, you know, if it makes sense for you to start from, from the, the, the child, go ahead, right, so the testing becomes much more difficult. So you have to develop your, you know, a tactical way, a, a nice way to testing your, your code, right? All right, so that's what it is. And what is, it's, it's uh, it, everything in Java or everything in C++, everything in Python, everything in the modern programming is what? Object-oriented programming. O, O, P. Okay, creating objects, creating objects. All right, and you know, and Python and okay, a lot of libraries are written. So, for example, when you say, for example, Mumbai, for example, or Pandas, which we're gonna use. All right, all right. So, what we are doing, I mean, what is the first thing we do? Import Pandas as P, for example. So, what we are importing? A library. A library built of what? Many classes. Many classes. You saw the, the, the classes that like many like that pandas. Okay. Pandas by the by the by the way, it's it's it is by itself the catalog is like this. And it's just a library. It's just a library, right? Okay, so some people want to do Python, right? Okay. Alright. So now you, you imported what you are doing. using the leaves so you have classes inside many classes and these classes having these functions as leaves so you're calling these leaves just so you're getting training to how to use it okay use it and you know using it for your logic all right so i mean i think next week we're gonna have let me check what we have next week by the way the midterm will be in the week it will be it will be in the week of uh, October, uh, just a second. So next week, next week we're gonna uh, go to advanced topics. All right, can you see? Okay, advanced topics. All right, and then week after we're gonna talk about database and GUI. Okay, so we're gonna introduce you how to write a simple GUI application and uh, and you know, for GUI, there's so many libraries. There's so advanced. 
and some of these Gimli libraries, you need a whole semester to learn them. You're going to tinker with the simple one you're gonna, and the database how to connect. And then, uh, then okay, so in, after that, okay, so the, I will skip this semester. It will be available in the, in, in, for you in the, in the Canvas. Uh, the network programming, again, skip it, web client and servers, I will skip it. And then after that, we're going to start with pandas. Okay, we'll start with pandas, data science, and see how much we can. So that's my plan. Okay? So basically, you have to plan for your midterm, which will be not next week, not the following week, right? Is it the following week or the next week? How, how many classes do we have before? I think next week and then the week after, I think we have it. Oh, the week after? I'm pretty sure. Okay. So then we're gonna cover the advanced, uh, advanced, uh, and I might, you know. So next week we're gonna cover basically the advanced uh, topics, all right. Then after that we'll have the exam, yeah. as we say, sure. all right. So m I might skip the the database and the Google and go right away to the. Uh, okay. So we'll see what we'll what we'll do. Okay. Unless you want to really want to know about the G Anyways, all the material about the field, okay, you have to learn it for yourself. But this uh, dealt more in data science and pandas. And maybe at the end of the semester, we'll introduce you to some machine learning, you know, how to use it in a bind if we have time. Uh, so, yeah, so, okay, let's do it. Still, we have enough energy? Yeah. Right. Just, you know, yes. How do you recommend we start studying for the midterm? Oh, so, can you turn. Uh, Turn it off because the class is finished, thank you.